Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Admin Bar, the Duck Face Challenge. No, I'm not doing it. You win. I'm going to let you have this one. I'm not going to space ducker you and, and ruin your whole week. It's and, all right. Uh, take, on the, take on the challenge and beat you. So I'm going to let you have this one. He cheated by being called Ducker. Yeah, I, it's not really fair. So everyone just votes for him because yeah. of his name. Yeah, I mean, I imagine since you have Jackson in your last name, like if we did a moonwalk challenge, you're going to wipe the floor. Oh, yeah, I win every time. People don't think I was related and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've always thought. <laughs> I figured y'all were related. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for, for those of you who don't know Lee, which I don't know if that's anybody left on this planet or especially anybody left that follows us around, but uh, this is Lee Jackson, Hi. Mr. Agency Trailblazer, Angled Crown. Uh, all kinds of things. So, Lee, agency you... transformation, event yeah. engine. Uh, what was that? Agency, huh? Trans agency trans transformation, yeah. event engine, ch worship leader at church. I do all sorts of things. Life's a bit too boring otherwise, isn't it? No doubt. Well, well give us the little uh, compact intro. What are, what are you doing, Mr. Lee? Okay. My name is Mr. Lee. You can call me Lee if you wish, less formal. Um, I do run Angle Crown. That's a development business where I help design agencies make WordPress themes from their designs. I run the Agency Trailblazer podcast, which you all should know about, hopefully. And this guy has been on the show uh, with us and will be on the show again soon. Matt's been on as well. So we always welcome you guys know that. Um, we also run another company called Event Engine, which is in the WordPress space. We build WordPress websites for event companies. Um, and I'm also so um, rocking out next year with a new brand called Agency Transformation, where we're launching an event, first event in the UK to help agency owners transform their business. And I'm also writing a book. So I'm keeping really, really busy. And also we've just employed a new digital marketer, which is really cool. So we, uh, he'll, he'll gonna... start next year. Okay. Is that compact enough or was that too much? No, that that's great. He's not he's not already started. We can't debut him right no, here. We, not yet. He, he will uh, start on the 3rd of January. That's awesome. The team is growing. Yeah, exactly. You're going to need that help with all that stuff you got going on. Absolutely. So tell uh, me a little bit more about agency transformation. What gave you the idea, the crazy idea to have a live event? All right. So um, I think I was chatting to, I've chatted to you before on this, haven't I, where um, one of the things I find in agency life is very often we kind of repeat each year and we kind of stay in the same place. We never quite achieve what we want to do. Maybe we grab this new exciting AppSumo deal because Paul Lacey, you can do the uh, thing now, Paul Lacey recommended it and you're like, oh, this is going to transform my agency. But when we look at the numbers, we find that actually our business kind of looks the same as the year before and the year before that. Maybe we've made a few changes, but generally we kind of get frustrated about where we're at and we can't make some real change. So um, what I've been working on over the last few years, I've done things like the agency reset roadmap, et cetera, but I kind of split it out into five different stages of transformation. So people can create, as it were, 20% steps of transformation in their in their business, wherever they're at. Um, so they can say, right, I'm going to do these actions and that's going to make these significant changes to my business. And I can actually therefore measure that as it were. Um, so that's the idea uh, that's come out. That's the content we're going to be putting out all of next year. That's the book we're going to be doing. But equally, the most important thing for us is we're getting speakers from around the world together here in the UK. And I mean, literally from around the world um, who will be talking on on all of those different key pillars of transformation within a business. Basically, that's just the aim for allowing people to go and graze on what they need so they can give themselves a 90 day, six month and a one year plan for actually making some change that by the end of that period of time, whatever they've chosen, they can go, holy crap, I actually did it. Things look different now, what's next? So that's, that's what I'm all about because I think I'm sick for myself and also for a lot of my friends in the, in the industry who are working their asses off and not seeing stuff happen as much. They feel like they're just treading water. Right. And I think the idea of doing it as a live event with people in the room is such a great idea because, you know, all these things you, you can learn online and take seminars and courses and all that. And, and some of that content's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot from it. But you know, you can kind of stuff it away because you can close that, that browser window and move on to something else or you're distracted or, you know, you're not immersed in it like you are in a live event. So the only real comparison I've, I've had personally was just going to WordCamp recently. And just that, uh, I don't know, you just, you get that mojo going that, you know, you're immersed in this and you have people around you with the same mindset and making connections and, uh, you know, people to hold you accountable. So I think it's a pretty brilliant idea. You, you talked about guests from all, all around the world. Can you talk about who all is uh, coming to your shindig? 
Well, I can, I can tell you about a few of them. A okay. few of them we still need to sign contracts, but um, we do have, a, a, well, we've got a range of speakers. We've just confirmed Dave Foy, of all people. Nice. That's awesome. We, we do have Chris Ducker Duckface, okay. who's coming along as well. He'll be talking. Obviously, I'm going to be talking. We've got Mike Killen, um, who did that awesome video the other day to slap that person down, who we will not name, um, who was being really mean to uh, other friends of ours. We've got Pete Everett. We've got Amy Woods. Amy Woods, the content repurposing legend. Uh, we've also got Samantha Hearn. She's talking more about things like mindset, etc., because there's definitely things like mental health and well-being. Um, there are a few other WordPress big hitters that we can't say the names of yet until we've confirmed uh, and nailed those down. We were hoping to get Nathan Wrigley, but he went and booked a holiday at the same time. I mean, how inconsiderate is that? Yeah, that isn't cool at all. Pretty inconsiderate, isn't it? I understand he has and, to cancel yeah. everything now. Yeah, he should do. Absolutely. We've also got my friend Jo. She runs a, um, a business called No, no Bullshit Marketing, which is an amazing, um, <laughs> amazing name um, where she literally just says things as, as it is and, and goes straight in for the, all right, here are the facts, here's what you should be doing, et cetera. So we've got quite a wide range of, of um, speakers from different areas not just from our industry but, but from people outside as well who can give us a much better angle which is really cool dead excited mate yeah I, i'm really jealous that there's a giant ocean in between me and that event uh that, mm. that causes a little bit of an issue so uh is there plans to record it live stream it how how can us uh folks over in the states be a part of it sure okay well um we won't be live streaming that I'm aware of right now because of the constraints of the internet connection. We're going to ha hopefully have 300 people in the room in a conference style setup. So people are like focused, take notes and can create action plans. So if they're all probably going to be on their Wi-Fi with their phones, et cetera, and maybe their laptops, Right. Although I don't want them to do that because they might not be listening if they're on the laptops. Um, so I can't imagine then being able to try and successfully live stream it without getting some sort of extra internet connection sorted out. So that's still, got to be worked out what we will be doing though is we've got uh, professional uh, videographers if that's the right word and we'll be uh, recording all of the audio as well obviously um, and then we will be trying to work out what to do with that and whether we package that up and sell that as like an online version after the show or whether we just put it in our membership I'm not 100% sure what we'll do with it yet so that's all still out there but anyone who comes will definitely be able to get access then to uh, the recordings afterwards as well um, but yeah, we need to work that out. We do want to do a US show, but really I want to validate it here in the UK first um, and then head on over to the USA as well and, uh, and do something out there as well for those, those of y'all out there who, who can't fly over. I've Although heard, this is the first one, so come on, fly over. Let's have fun. I've, I've heard Texas is nice. You should uh, have the US event in Texas. It's right in the middle of the states, yeah. uh, so centrally located for everyone and especially so, for me. Yeah, well, I was going to say, where's the nearest convention center to your house? That's what you need to be sending me a link to, isn't it? Okay, so you yeah. Can... <laughs> yeah, there's one, just a couple uh, couple miles down the road, so it'll be yeah. perfect. I'll go ahead and get you booked up. Oh, 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 great. Oh, man. <laughs> I can imagine I get a massive bill or something like that. I'm like, where the heck's this come from? Right, no doubt. Yeah. Well, that, that's <laughs> awesome that, uh, you know, you'll be able to repackage all that content, and I'm excited that, at the chance of um, it coming over here. I know you spent some time in the U.S., what was it, last year? Yeah, that's right. Uh, spent some time in Florida, right? You have plans to come back? Uh, we do. Not this year. Uh, this coming year, we're not. But we probably will the year after. We're going to spend a, probably another couple of months out there in the States, if not longer. We might actually split our time as well, do some time in Canada. We've got family up there. Um, and then we were considering going L.A. for maybe a month. Uh, so because there's loads of people over that side that we know in the community that we just love to hang out with um, and then maybe uh, go over as well to the Florida side just simply because I love Disney World so much compared to any other Disney park. Um, equally, I might be over next year later on in the year if we decide to do some sort of small meetup, which is potentially in the works. So that's kind of what's going on, but it would only be like a, a get together maybe for a, a, a day's get together and I'd go and see a few people as well because uh, we've got clients in the States who'd be great to connect with. That's awesome. International man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so, man. You, uh, I don't feel like it. Uh, I, I, I now work in the same village. We finally sorted an office out in the same village so I can walk from my house. That's awesome. No car needed. Brilliant. Yeah, I walked straight from the living room right into my office. It was great. Well, mine's more of a seven-minute walk in the cold, but it's still a beautiful walk. So. Yeah, your, your office looks country. a little bit nicer than mine, too. So, <laughs> Plus, you have staff. I don't need staff in my, sure. uh, in my, in my room. No, I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but you did Sorry. say something earlier about the about agency transformation, um, about some five pillars and where people can kind of 
jump in where their business is at. So tell me a little bit about that, because I'm sure there's going to be people who are just starting out and you want this event to be good for them. And there's going to be some people that are years into their business. So how have you kind of sorted that, those plans out? Sure. I mean, I've kind of broken broken it out, sorry, into several steps. I mean, the first step would be understanding your identity. I mean, you've all heard of things like niching that, but it's also understanding who you are, what your strengths are, who is your serving, the problems that you're solving for those people. So that's a whole package in its own right, understanding your identity so that you can nail and say, this is exactly who I am. That affects absolutely everything for your business. Because if you don't know your identity, then you don't know um, who it is you're talking to. You don't know your messaging. You don't know how to formulate your messaging. You essentially know nothing. So you become all things to all men, which is pretty much impossible. Um, if you were to go networking and say, hey, my name's Derek and I build websites for anybody who needs a website, then Derek basically serves nobody. And nobody in the room is going to understand how to make a referral to Derek. Whereas if Derek walks in there right now and says, hey, I'm looking for plumbers or I'm looking for air conditioning um, service companies because I, I look after them and I get them more bookings or I get them more service contracts, I'm instantly going to think of the air conditioning guy that I know down the road and make an introduction. So there's all sorts of things like that. Uh, we then go on into the next, which is value. And that's understanding not only the the you know your it's well it's understanding your value and the value that you have to offer to your clients but equally it's understanding how things like how to price for your projects etc and helping people understand things like um you know their, their discoveries uh, the features and also helping people understand um going back to their value understand the value of the history that they have that comes to this point that allows them to solve a problem um so you've got that section we then move on once you've got your identity and your understand your value, your worth and all that sort of stuff, you're then moving on into your platform. So this is choosing the platform or platforms for your message, which could be local networking, it could be via social media on different platforms, it could be different styles of marketing campaigns. So it's just understanding how it is you communicate what you've worked out in step one and step two um, of the entire process. We're then moving on into your output. So by now you should be growing because you've understood those three steps and you've been projecting yourself out there. You've generated leads. So now you want to make sure that your output is freaking amazing. So that's things like your processes and procedures and all of that sort of stuff, client onboarding, um, making sure that you can get the most out of a project for a client and for yourself, all that sort of thing. And then finally, because your output is freaking awesome. And again, you've remembered all those other four steps. You've got the future, which is then, you know, employing people, growing your team, etc. because, more scalable and expanding and all of that sort of stuff so those are those five pillars and a lots of people are at many many different stages and I think one of the other ideas as well is an awful lot of listeners to both the admin bar to the um, agency trailblazer podcast to agency highway um, to Kim Dell's podcast etc a lot of the agency owners are all people that maybe are at, right at the beginning of that maybe they've been a solo uh, entrepreneur for a very long time and they want to start going through those stages of growth. So really it's helping people to go through that. Um, equally though, if you've already got an agency with a load of people, but you want to grow, you might be starting at the platform or at the output section. Yeah. And that was a long, long answer, mate. Sorry. No, no, that's great. And it, <laughs> there, there's no doubt though, even if you are further along in that journey, I'm sure there's mm. going to be plenty of stuff you can learn uh, from, from the beginning and just sure. learning. I, you get so much from just learning from other people's experiences. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. I, don't, I, I try to take any opportunity to learn no matter what it is, because there's always something I can take from it. Mm -hmm. Now I, I do have to, uh, I have to settle something here. Earlier okay. this morning, I, I posted a, a secret post in the admin bar group that you were not supposed to see. And I, I, I specifically said for you to not look at it. And then you <laughs> jumped into the comments. So <laughs> You've kind of spoiled part of the surprise here, which... Well, I didn't read the rest. Once you told me to stop, I kind of stopped. Okay. Well, the original post said not to look, so... Okay. I didn't read that bit. I saw the okay. comments. Right. Okay. okay. So basically, we, we took some, uh, some viewer questions. These okay. are hard hitting. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would get some tissues, wipe the tears. Uh, this is going to be difficult. So I do have a few questions here. That, perfect. Okay. Perfect. So let me let me scroll through here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and read a couple of them. So first, I'm getting emotional already, mate. Yes. First, let's talk giraffes. Sure. Okay. If we could scale any other animal up to the size of a giraffe, what would be the funniest? This question comes from Matt Davies. It would have to be a sausage dog. Okay. Because they've already got a long body and then a really long sure. neck. I think that would yeah yeah okay. So, I'm guessing they would just scale proportionately. 
for the most part, or we're just going to add a total long neck to them. Really long neck, short body. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That sounds good. Let's see here. Um, a serious question. Let's see. Um, so if you had to pick a local guy to highlight as an awesome designer and developer based on your local town's location, who would that be? It would be uh, the team at Angle Crown. Ooh. Actually, also, it might be Rich. Taking in second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. It would obviously have to be Richard Bambra Bland. Give him a big shout out. He's an amazing designer. He's a really, really nice guy. Yes, absolutely. Make sure you pop a link to his website as well so people can check out how cool he is. We will. And we'll... he's also um, given loads of amazing work to the Generate Press community. So if people aren't following him, they absolutely should. Absolutely. I, I will make sure to link it up in here. I think Matt really just blew up all the questions in here. In fact, I was going to tag him in the, in the original post, but I knew yeah. he'd have some sort of sense to know that there was jackassery afoot. And <laughs> going in. So we'll, we'll go with one more, uh, one more from Matt here since he contributed so many and took so much time out of his day. Mm -hmm. If you had to replace your hands with some, or replace your hands with something other than hands, hooks, or claws, what would you choose and why? I have literally no idea. If I, uh, it's you not even a question. Hand. Yeah, yeah. Lost you, my hands. you lost your hands, and you had to replace them, but not with something traditional like a prosthetic or or a, a hook like a pirate. What okay. Would you go with? Then probably a spatula for one hand, mm -hmm. yeah, so I can cook better, you know, and turn right. stuff over, and then a food processing mixer thing on the other one. Okay. There you go, yeah. And so then you I just be a cook. chef at that point. Basically, yeah. Yeah, okay. awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you putting up with our questions. Thank you, Matt. We, we I, have to I, give the people what they want. <laughs> I think Matt needs to just um, perhaps get there's these apps, isn't there, that allows you to look at how much time you spend on social media. Uh, yeah, I think Matt might need to install that because I'm, I did see there was about 45 comments by the end of that. I didn't look at them, obviously, but I can right. see there was a lot of comments and a lot said Matt. There, yeah, 43 of them were Matt. So, <laughs> do, you, do you think he has ADD a little, maybe? Possibly? No, no. No, he's just passionate. Yeah. About giraffes and stuff. <laughs> Have a good time with him. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. Well, for the people wanting some more information on agency transformation, they can go to theadminbar.com forward slash agency transformation. And you have a, a beautiful site there. And it looks a little bit different than a typical site I've seen you build. What, what did you do differently? All right. So I figured I would have an affair with Elemental. Oh my God. So dun, Elemental dun, was my dun. mistress on the side. Um, we used David Von Gries's page builder framework for the theme because um, we've been using it internally for a while on like test development sites. So we thought we'd try it in production. It's really, really good. And we're looking at using that for 2019 for future site builds. And then we wanted to use Elemental because people go on about it like cray cray. I've had a, an account for it for years and hardly ever used it. Um, so I thought, well, I'll go for it. And and I was really, really impressed at how much it's grown up since I used it about two years ago. Sure. Um, there's so much more you can do. So I think Elementor for designers, I think, because you can do so much with regards to effects and stuff like that. And then we would still use Beaver Builder for a lot of the development pieces that we do because we like to be able to create custom modules and creating stuff in Beaver Builder is so freaking easy. It's multi-site compatible, which we work a lot with. Um, so we probably will still stick with Beaver Builder for that. But I think for the future, including the Angle Crown website, we may even move that over uh, to Elementor at some point because internally it just gives us tons of creative freedom. And they've gone, um, they've really expanded, haven't they? Including like the Thema stuff that's all mm -hmm. built in. Whereas with Beaver Builder, you have to install that separately, et cetera, et cetera. So they've, they've done an amazing job. Kudos to Ben. I need to get him back on the show, really. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, I, you hear a lot of people say that kind of Beaver Builder for developers and Elementor for designers and my background's in design. And, mm -hmm. and I started with Beaver Builder and now I do most of my work in, in Elementor. But there's still plenty of things that, uh, you know, Elementor has added all those themer type options, but they're just mm -hmm. nowhere near as in depth, you know, as, as what you can do with themers. But they're catching up significantly. I think for me, though, to be able to hand over that Elementor site to a client wouldn't work because I can't customize the experience enough for them. 
Uh, it's just too overwhelming, I think, in my opinion. Sure. Just for me and you, it's not. You know, we could use it with our eyes closed, but a client might get freaked out. If you see my sites, you know that I do them with my eyes closed. Yes, exactly. And uh, more pointed out, though, that recently they have launched a new feature, I believe, and they seem to be launching a new feature every five seconds, which also mm-hmm. impresses me, uh, where you can, in theory, lock a template down so that clients can only edit the text. And I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. So I'm keeping my close BDI on Elementor. I'm pretty impressed. I think there's a world where they can all coexist. All the page builders can all live in harmony. 30% of the internet, mate. There's billions of websites out there. It really doesn't matter, does it? Might as well use both. Why not? Yeah, no doubt. I'm, I'm taking care of websites on both. So I, I enjoy, uh, I'm glad that I have a bunch of Beaver Builder sites still so I can still get a chance to play with it as it Amen. To. So Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate your time with no us. Worries, man. I know uh, we like to cut up and have a little fun, but honestly, uh, I I appreciate everything you do and what you give back to the community because I've learned so nice much man. from you. Um, you know, my business would be nowhere near where it is now. Yep, <laughs> no, that's where the uh, tissues were needed. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice nowhere uh, near where it is now without all the, all the content and things you produce and the help and the calls and all that. So I know Thanks, my mate. story isn't a, a unique one in that case. There's uh probably literally hundreds or thousands of people that feel the same way. So uh, a big shout out and a thank you to you for uh, all that you give back to this community. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you are one of those hundreds of thousands that feel the same, I would love to know because that's like my crack cocaine when people say really nice things like that. And it really does boost my spirits, especially after a real rough 2018. So thanks, buddy. I really, really appreciate yeah, that. No doubt. All right. Uh, well, let's fill up the comments below this video with, uh, with all like how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be nice to me for a day. That I'd should like be that. easy to do. I'd love that. Come on. Yeah. I'm a nice guy. All right. Thanks very much, guy. All right. Thanks, Lee. I appreciate it. We'll talk Bye. with you soon.